Hello everyone. Before diving into today's topic, we want to take a moment to thank you for your support. Every like, comment, and subscription truly makes a difference and helps this channel grow. If you enjoy our content and don't want to miss our upcoming videos, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to receive all updates. Have we ever really moved away from the moon? Maybe not, at least in our minds. Since humans first set foot on our satellite, the moon has remained imprinted in the collective imagination as a symbol of possibility, of pushing limits, of conquering the unknown. But for over half a century, no one has walked on its surface again. Why did we stop dreaming about it? And why today, after decades of silence, is humanity once again looking at the moon with eyes full of ambition? It's been many years since the last time a human walked on the moon. It was December 1972. The Apollo 17 mission ended, leaving not only the footprints of Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt on the moon's dusty surface but also the silence of a bygone era. Since then, nothing. The moon remained there, suspended in darkness, still and distant, like a goal already reached, a dream set aside. But why? Why did NASA, after accomplishing one of the most extraordinary feats in human history, never return? And why today, more than 50 years later, is humanity ready to set foot on our satellite again? In the 1950s and 60s, the world was divided into two opposing ideological blocs. On one side the United States with its Western allies, on the other the Soviet Union and the Communist bloc. But the real competition wasn't just on Earth, it soon moved beyond the atmosphere. In 1957, the USSR launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite in history. Just four years later, in 1961, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first man to travel into space. It was a shock for the United States. Soviet superiority in space raised fears of military dominance as well. In that climate of tension and rivalry, space became a political and strategic priority. So, in May 1961, President John F. Kennedy gave his famous speech to Congress. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal, before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. An act of pride, but also a geopolitical move. The conquest of the moon became a national mission. Thus was born the Apollo program a colossal endeavor involving over 400,000 people including engineers, scientists, technicians, and astronauts. In a few years, rockets, capsules, and lunar modules were designed and built. But the path was not without pain. On January 27, 1967, a routine test turned into tragedy. A fire aboard the Apollo 1 capsule killed the three astronauts Grissom, White, and Chaffee. The capsule was hermetically sealed, and the flames spread in seconds. They had no escape. Despite the devastating blow, NASA did not stop. Apollo 7 was the first crewed flight in Earth orbit. Apollo 8 went further, it orbited the moon. Apollo 10 tested the landing maneuvers. And finally, on July 20, 1969, Apollo 11 landed on the Sea of Tranquility. Neil Armstrong stepped off the ladder and spoke words that would echo through the ages. That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Between 1969 and 1972, six crewed missions reached the moon's surface. Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17. The astronauts explored, collected samples, installed scientific instruments, and even drove a lunar rover. Then everything stopped. The last mission was Apollo 17. Before climbing back into the lunar module, Eugene Cernan said, We shall return. Not because we have to, but because we want to. He didn't know it would take more than 50 years. The official explanation for the end of the lunar program is simple, cost. The Apollo program had absorbed about $25 billion at the time, an amount equivalent today to over $150 billion. Once the goal was reached, continuing no longer seemed justifiable. But there were also political and social reasons. The United States was going through intense turmoil, the Vietnam War, economic crisis, civil rights movements, feminist and African-American activism. 
Public opinion began to ask, is it worth spending billions on the moon while there is hunger, injustice, and inequality on Earth? A slogan from that era said it clearly, rockets are bread, President Nixon decided to end lunar landings. The Apollo 18, 19, and 20 missions were canceled. The moon was abandoned. In the following years, NASA changed its strategy. The focus shifted to Earth orbit and robotic exploration. The space shuttle was born, telescopes and interplanetary probes were launched, and in 1998 construction began on the International Space Station, a symbol of collaboration between once rival nations. The moon, however, seemed no longer needed. It had been conquered. It was history. But something has changed. Today, more than ever, the moon is back at the center of global interest. And the reasons are at least three. Recent discoveries have revealed that the moon is much more interesting than expected. Frozen water has been found in polar craters, a crucial element for human survival and the production of space fuel. Its geology may reveal secrets about Earth's origins and possibly the evolution of the solar system. Whoever controls the moon could control access to deep space. The lunar surface could become a platform for missions to Mars and beyond. Moreover, it's hypothesized that the moon holds rare resources like helium-3, useful for future nuclear fusion technologies. It's not just government agencies eyeing the moon. Private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are revolutionizing space access. China has already landed rovers on the moon and aims to build a base. India, Europe, Japan, and Russia are also developing new lunar programs. From all this comes Artemis, the new international space program to return humans to the moon. The name is no coincidence. Artemis, in Greek mythology, was Apollo's twin sister. This time, however, the goal is not just to plant a flag. It's to stay. The vision is different, to create a stable and sustainable presence, to experiment with living on another celestial body, to lay the foundation for humanity's future expansion into space. Returning to the moon is not an act of nostalgia, but a logical step in our evolution. It's a way to rekindle the dream of exploration, but with new tools, new values, and a new awareness. After more than half a century, the time has come, not to go back, but to move forward.